So what is aliasing in sampling? And I like to think of a wheel turning and we're taking a video of the wheel. And the frames in that video are the samples. And let's say we marked a point on the wheel uh, and the wheel is turning and each frame, that point on that wheel will have moved uh, as, we, uh, as, as it rotates and we're taking frames one after the other. If we're taking lots of frames during the time it takes the wheel to go around one circle, then the picture will look like this. So let's plot the phase of this. We, we have the, let's make the phase here be a zero phase and increasing in this direction. This is a typical uh, way we think about phase, increasing in that direction. Uh, so then the continuous time phase, it starts at 90 and it comes down to zero and then it goes to 360, it flips to 360 of course, and then comes back down to zero. So the continuous phase uh, of this um, if we drew the phase in time, uh, the continuous phase looks like this. Okay, it's, it's a waveform that goes uh, cycles like this, where it starts at 90, uh, it goes to zero, and then goes up to 360. Okay, so this is the continuous time phase of this wheel. Uh, at, at, but now we're looking a sampled version. So if we plot out the sampled version after we've taken samples, uh, well, it's going to look just like this except sampled version. So it's going to start at 90 uh, and it's going to come down. And the rate of it coming down depends on two things. One is the speed of the wheel, which caused this phase to have this slope, but also the sampling rate. Okay, so uh, these are our samples. Uh, and this, as I said, this slope depends on both the speed of the wheel and the sampling rate. That's an important uh, concept. Okay, so this is our discrete samples n. Okay, so let's think of another speed. We, we keep the sampling rate the same, but let's think of another speed of rotation of the wheel. And let's think of the one where the wheel goes around an entire, it's as fast as speed, and the wheel goes around an entire um, rotation in the time that it takes to do the sampling. In that case, what are you going to be getting for your waveform? So in that case, we're going to have a waveform where every time you take a sample, the wheel has done an entire revolution. So it doesn't change. This waveform does not change. So you've got the same wheel, the same sampling rate, just changing the speed of the wheel, and you get an entirely different sampled waveform of the phase. Okay, so this we, we're starting to see the effect of sampling at different or uh, uh, sampling with different rotation speeds. Okay, what if the wheel went even a little bit faster? So this wheel is going. Uh, we take a, a photograph there, and then the next frame. Let's say the wheel has gone so fast that it's gone entirely around and a little bit more even. Then you're going to get this, and then it goes entirely around and a little bit more. And you get here, entirely round and a little bit more because it's going so fast. In this case, you've got exactly the same scenario as this case. So this case, the wheel was traveling slowly, only that much between each frame. In this case, the wheel's traveling fast, going an entire way around, plus a little bit. And so in this case, the waveform that we're going to get is going to be exactly the same as in the first case. So when you've got your discrete time samples, if this is all we had and this was all that was stored in our memory, we would not be able to go in our just digital memory, in our sampler, we would not be able to know whether the real wheel had turned this speed or had turned this speed. So there's an ambiguity and this comes about because exactly from sampling. And let's look at another interesting scenario in between these speeds. So it's going faster than it was here, but not as fast to make an entire revolution. Let's say it goes slightly less than 2 pi. So this one would go around here to slightly less than 2 pi, and then again, the next time, slightly less, each time slightly less than 2 pi. And then we get this picture here. And this picture here is what I think we're all familiar with seeing in the movies, when a car wheel looks like it's going backwards. 
So when the car speeds up and speeds up, it looks like it's getting faster and faster and faster. And then at some speed, it actually looks to us like the wheel is turning backwards. Uh, of course, it's going forwards at a faster rate, like we've shown here, going all the way around here. And because of the sampling in the frames of the video, it looks like it's going backwards. And this is aliasing. So when we ask what is aliasing, this is aliasing. And if we were to draw the waveform here for this sample, uh, this wave, uh, this speed, so we keep the sample rate the same, for this speed, then the waveform is going to look uh, entirely different. In this case, it starts at 90 and then it goes to slightly more than 90. It's gone, the wheel's gone all the way around to this point, but measuring phase, it's more than 90. And then, so in fact, this is increasing the phase and it increases up to 360 and then uh, goes back to zero. Uh, as it as it goes all the way around here to zero and then starts increasing again. Okay, so we've got the same wheel, same sampling rate, we've just changed the speed of the wheel and we get entirely different digital uh, versions and we've noticed that there's an ambiguity and we've noticed that the slope changes from a from this slope to exactly the opposite slope uh, or the op uh, from decreasing to increasing uh, and it in terms of the wheel, it makes it look like it's going backwards, which I think we're all familiar with. So this is aliasing. So I want to also link this to the pictures that we're uh, familiar with in our signals and systems when we're looking at Fourier transforms and we're talking about aliasing. So let's link this practical example with the wheels to our signals and systems. So this is the omega, which is our angular rotation speed, and this is the Fourier transform of the sampled waveform. Okay, let's consider uh, these waveforms here to start with. Okay, so let's let's start off by considering this one here. Okay, so this one here. Let's think, how would you get this? Well, you get this, like I said, with the wheel rotating in a full circle around, but you also get it when the wheel doesn't rotate at all. So if the wheel didn't rotate, you'd also get this picture here. So not rotating at all is zero in the frequency domain. So I'm going to draw a little um, a dot here and I'm going to say there's a component of the zero frequency. So this, this waveform here rep is represented at zero frequency. But also, as we've said, it's at where it goes exactly around 2 pi. Okay, so at 2 pi, it also represents that waveform here. So this, this waveform that you've stored, it represents a signal, a wheel traveling at zero speed here, but it also represents a wheel traveling at 2 pi. Of course, it also represents a wheel traveling at 4 pi and so on. So we're getting a repetition of these uh, in the frequency domain. Of course, it also is a wave where if the wheel had turned in the reverse, it had actually gone backwards, if the wheel had actually turned reverse by 2 pi, then it also represents that scenario and it also represents it reverse by 4 pi and of course all the other uh, negative ones. So in our frequency domain from our sampled waveform, we get replicas in the frequency domain. Okay, let's look at uh, some of the other ones. Let's look at this one here, the one we originally had. Well, it's moving forwards at a small speed. So that's this one here. I'm going to represent that with an X on the top. Of course, now that we see this, it's also if it went a full way around plus a little bit, then it would also, this waveform here would also represent that scenario because that's this scenario over here. Okay, so that's where it went a full way around plus a little bit. So that's this one here where it's gone more than 2 pi. So more than 2, all the way around is 2 pi. All the way around plus a bit is more than 2 pi. Okay, it's also, if you notice here, it's also the case that um, uh, if it went negative by slightly less than 2 pi. So that's this one here because this is minus 2 pi. This is minus 4 pi. So if it goes slightly less than that and also, of course, slightly less than 4 pi. Okay, and we see that repeating as well up here. Okay, now what about uh, this one? So this one here is uh, where it's gone backwards by a small amount. So this is this one, and I'll draw a box on the top of that one. Of course, it's also gone as if it went backwards and in full way around of 2 pi plus a little bit. So that's negative means going backwards. So going backwards by a full way around plus more. So that's here. Uh, of course, the, the copies at 4 pi uh, and also... 2 pi here and this one here as well. 
Okay, so we're seeing that there's these replicas, this ambiguity, because these waveforms, once you've sampled them, they represent this waveform just as equally as much as they do this one, just as equally as much as this one, and so on. Okay, so why does this aliasing, and looking backwards, where's the aliasing in this picture here? Well, let's think about what your eye is doing. Your eye is smoothing out. So the reason that your eye reconstructs this is because when it's received this waveform here, this is the waveform that was uh, stored in the, in the camera when it, was, when it took that film, it stored this waveform. Okay, but when it plays it back, uh, it's got to choose which one of these copies it plays back to you. So as we said, this one, it represents this one here, which is what actually happened. The wheel actually turned at that speed, slightly less than 2 pi. Um, but when it plays back to you, it, it uh, doesn't know that, or your eye doesn't know that. And what your eye actually does is it does a low-pass filter. And so here's a low-pass filter, and it does it between minus pi and pi. That's naturally what your eye is doing. We'll just sort of look into why that's the case just in a, you know, right now. Okay, so what it's doing is it's applying a low-pass filter, and what that means is you're convolving with the filter, which means you're multiplying in the frequency domain. So this is multiplying all of these copies by zero, all of these copies by zero, and just keeping the ones in between. So let me just say that again. So even though the wheel actually turned by slightly less than 2 pi and was going quite fast, because it was this one here, this is the, one, the actual one that happened, when we reconstruct it, we only reconstruct the copies between minus pi and pi. That's what our eye naturally does. So we actually reconstruct this copy here. And this is the aliasing, because a high frequency uh, 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 signal or a high frequency turning has reconstructed as a low frequency, in this case, in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's what's happening uh, in our eye. So let's just look into that just a little bit more and look at some around some of the edges around this pi. Why is it minus pi and pi? Well, let's think of something that's turned uh, faster than this one here, but not quite going into the other half. Because if, it, if it's in this half, if it's turned faster than these ones, so these are further apart, let's say it's turned all the way around to just before the halfway mark then our eye is going to naturally map this point to this point when, and smooth out between those points. If it goes further than halfway round, our eye is naturally going to think it's closer on this side, and our eye is naturally going to map this point to this point and think that it's gone backwards. That's what's happening in our eye. And so that's why it's pi, because pi is halfway around. So we go from here to halfway around. Uh, and then this way, if it's gone more than that, it looks like to our eye that it's gone the other way. And that's the mapping in here. So this is uh, this is pi. So just put a bit more detail on that. So if, if it's gone slightly less than pi, it looks like this. Also, of course, uh, there's a minus pi. As we know, there's the duplicate. So this one corresponds to slightly less than pi. It also corresponds to this one here, slightly less than here, and so on. The copies down here and here. Uh, if it's gone slightly faster than pi, a bit more than pi, it'll be on this side, uh, and then, but that maps back in over here. And so when we do our low-pass filtering, if it has gone slightly faster than pi, it's getting multiplied by zero in our low-pass filter, but it's coming back in on this side as a negative inside and it's therefore looking slower because the distance, it, it actually was this faster distance, more than pi, um, but it looks like it's slower, a negative distance, which is less than pi, in less than negative pi, but in magnitude less than pi. And so this is aliasing. And this is where we have, I'll just draw the final uh, picture here. I've talked about wheels and the wheels turning at one speed, and then I've talked about different speeds. But in signals, we know that uh, we have signals made up of sums of cos and sine waves, sinusoids, uh, and um, uh, that's also related to the wheel, of course, and there's a video in the link below if you'd like to know more about the relationship between a circle and the sinusoids. Um, but we've got signals made up of sums of sinusoids at different frequencies. That relates here to the wheel turning at different speeds, and we've got lots of wheels at lots of different speeds all together in our signal. And so if we had a signal that had frequency components that look like this, for example, uh, then uh, I might actually just draw that out a bit wider. Oh, sorry about that. Let's draw that a bit wider to make the point I'm trying to make. So if our signal had frequency components like this uh, in our signal, uh, in this continuous time signal over here, then if we're sampling at a rate such that 2 pi is here, so that this 
frequency is bigger than pi, uh, then we're going to be getting, that's when we're going to be getting the aliasing because there's going to be a copy of this, exactly like these copies up here, it is exactly the same. This copy is going to appear here and it's going to appear at minus 2 pi as well and all the other copies as well at higher frequency, at high, more 4 pi and um, uh, 4 pi and 6 pi and so on. And so as you can see here, this is the picture that you'll be more familiar with looking at where the higher frequency components, the bit of, that have gone beyond pi, are wrapping back in or wrapping back in at the other side here. So this frequency that's gone beyond pi is wrapping back in. And this is the picture that we're more used to seeing, not single waveforms at single frequencies, but a, a collection of waveforms from a Fourier transform of a real signal. And so this, everything outside this limit, outside the low-pass filter, whatever goes outside wraps back in at the other side. This is aliasing. So hopefully this has given you more insights into aliasing. Uh, check out the links below for more videos. Uh, like the video if it was useful. It helps others to find the video. And subscribe to the channel for more videos. Uh, check out the webpage as well. It's got a complete categorized list of the videos uh, with links to PDF worksheets.